for Julie's and and Sheila and uh, Ruth and Jean. Nice. Okay. Sorry about that. I should have reminded you or something if I'd have remembered. But I, I should have just remembered to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, all. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Sheila. Who well, um, is human? Uh, Stephen and followed by David Diamond. Please. Hey. Me. Myself, there we go. It was down in old Joe's ballroom on the corner by the square. All them drinks they were served round like usual, and the regular boy was there. On my left there was Big Joe McCaffrey and his eyes was bloodshot red when he turned to all the boys in the ballroom and you know these are the words he said I went down to that St. James Infirmary I saw my loving baby lying there She was stretched out on the long white table So cold, so pale, and so fair I went up and I spoke to the doctor Your gal is very low is what he said I come back to see my loving baby good God she's lying there dead let her go let her go God bless her wherever she may be she can search this life for the next one but she'll never find a man as sweet as me I, When I die, I want you to bury me In my high tied Stetson hat Put a $20 gold piece on my watch chain So the Lord will know I died standing pat Get me six good craft shooters for my Paul Bearers. Get me a chorus girl to sing me a song. Put a jazz band on my hearse wagon. And we'll raise hell as we walk along. Well, now that you've heard my sad story. I'll take another shot of the booze And if anybody should happen to ask you Just say I got the gambler's blues St. James Infirmary Blues, also known as the gambler's blues. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Um, and we have you can put it on. David Diamond, followed by Clive Wolf. Okay, David, take it away. Yes. Unmute. Right. There we go. Now, yeah. Uh, Steve's song was one of the first songs I ever learned off a 12 inch 78. So that dates me a bit. Uh, Had the same record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, small world. Okay. Uh, I've got to say about this one. Oh, yes. Uh, I get huge nostalgia every time I, I tune into. Uh, uh, to, to hear because because uh, I was born in London I now live in America in near Philadelphia and so I come here and 
all these lovely English voices and songs, and I think, wow. So the song has uh, come back to me. Uh, and it's, uh, I guess, I don't know whether it's a Cockney song or a musical song, but it's a song. Ah, oh, and Jimmy Dean was a funny looking fella. If he had a bigger mouth, he'd have took it for a cellar in his mouth. Queered him from winning the beauty show cause it was like a steamboat funnel or a railway arch or the black wolf tunnel and you can't see jim when he opens his mouth you know and as our jimmer goes a walking all apart you can hear the kids all hollering out what a mouth what a mouth what a north and south blimey what a mouth he's got when he was a baby law called love on his poor old mother used to beat him with a shovel what a gap poor chap he'd never been known to laugh because if he did it's a penny to a quid his face would fall in off oh mouth so large so not Called law called Lummy, he can whisper in his own ear, ain't it funny? And to quench his thirst, he has to have a drink of a mile. He got so drunk one foggy dawn, and he laid in the street and he started to yawn. And a poor old man was delivering the coals close by. And as he went to shoot his load, he saw Jim's mouth out in the road. Now this old man being a short-sighted fellow, well he saw Jim's mouth and he took it for a cellar and he shot the lot right into Jim's mouth, no joke. Now Jim poor soul's got a belly full of coal. And he coughs up lumps of coke. What a mouth, what a mouth, what a north and south. Blimey, what a mouth he's got. When he was a baby, Lord called Lovell, his poor old mother used to feed him with a shovel. What a gap. Poor chap. He's never been known to laugh. Because if he did, it's a penny to a quid. His face would fall in half. Well, Jim in bed one night was snoring and the neighbours all around thought a lion was a roaring and the old Dutch clock that was hanging on the bed, a room of all. Into his mouth it fell crash what? Jim woke and yelled for Dr. Jollop, said his wife, no fear. It's just the old Dutch clock, my dear. And now the neighbors, in it fine, look down Jim's throat to see the time but his wife my life she can't get a wink of sleep that's right for inside his tum she can hear the pendulum going tick a tick a tock all night what a mouth what a mouth what a north and south blind what a mouth he's got when he was a baby law called love his poor old mother used to feed him with a shovel what a cat poor chap he's never been known to laugh because if he did it's a pain to a quid his face was falling off Wait. Yeah. Brilliant. I, I should tell you that when my daughter, who's now in her fifties, uh, used to be with me driving about in the car, we used to have races to see who could sing that faster. <laughs> <laughs> she always won. <laughs> Excellent. I bet she still didn't sing it as fast as Harry Champion did on the halls. He sang very fast. I, Oh, I must get the record of that. I'm sure it's around. Okay. Uh, it would have been on 78 or on a cylinder or something. But oh, yeah, but they're, 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 they're all re... They're reissues, yeah, on CD. Yeah. 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 Okay, thanks very much, David. That was a jolly... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep us going in the musical. I like the musical theme. Doing well. Uh, I think I think Charlie O'Haggerty put that on a... On a um, it was one of those things they made just to put in jukeboxes. You know, there was a, 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 a like the size of a 45 with a great big hole in the middle. Mm. 
Tommy Steele sang it as well, but of course a lot. Tommy of Steele sang it, yeah. So he did, yeah. 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 So Boy from Bermondsey. Anyway, Clive, do you think you can probably follow that one? And after Clive, we'll have uh, Maggie. Okay. Are you there, Clive? He was there. He has to unmute. He has to unmute, but he... Hi Clive, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Is that, is that better? Yeah, it's better. Right. Right, here we go then. Right. There, there, that'll do. There was a lady, a lady of York, right for I did lie, she woke, and she fell a courting in her own father's park, down by the greenwood side, oh, she leaned her back against the thorn, right for I did lie, she woke, and there she had two pretty babes born, down by the greenwood side, oh. She had nothing to lap him in, right for why did I she woe? But she had a pen knife sharp and keen, down by the greenwood side, oh. She could not care if they felt the smart, right for why did I she woe? But she stabbed them right to the heart down by the greenwood sign dome she wiped the pen i'm fin the sludge right for why did lie she woe and the more she wiped it the more the blood showed down by the greenwood side oh and as she was walking in her own father's hall right for why did lie she woe Spy two pretty babes playing at the ball down by the greenwood side. Oh, pretty babes, pretty babes, if you were mine, right for why did I you? Oh, I dress you up in silk so fine down by the greenwood side. Oh, dear mother, dear mother, when we were thine, right for why did I you? Oh. You dressed us not in silk so fine, down by the greenwood side. Oh, and here we go to the heavens so high. Right for what we did lie, she woe. You'll go to bed when you do die, down by the greenwood side. Oh, end. <laughs> that was lovely, Clive. Mm, yes. Um, Maggie, can uh, you you be next to this to one? Are you doing an ensemble or separate? Uh, separate. So we reckon. Can he go first? Otherwise, it's. Sure. Yeah. The company's sure. back to back. He's got a guitar. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, and after you, David Kidman, please. Right. Okay. Right. Could I say, nobody's been saying where they come from. So, uh, which, uh, oh, David well, did. Well, David did. Right. right. Just, just put this right. I'm from Guernsey and Maggie's from Long Island, New York. But we've both been in this leafy suburb of East Finchley, Long, North London, since 1981. In fact, we can even date it. The, the weekend that Chas and I got hitched, we moved in here. Anyway. This is a song I learnt from a very old Archie Fisher album. And it was so old that it said that um, Archie Fisher was famous, amongst other things, for never having sung in London, which was a very long time ago. Just even to confuse you, I believe this was from Alfred Williams' 
songs of the Upper Thames Valley, but he was a naughty man and only wrote down the words and never collected the tunes. So I don't know where the tune came from. Oh, fair thee well, cold winter. Fare thee well, cold force. Nothing have I gained. But my own true love I've lost I'll sing and I'll be merry If fortune I do see And I'll rest when I am weary Let her go, farewell she Last night I met my true love down in yonder shady grove. A blush came to my love, and I gave to her the rose. She thought I should have spoken to her as I passed by, but before I'll humble. To my love, I'll lay me down and die. She may go or she may stay, for she knows that I don't care. I do think in my own heart, I am quite as good as her. And if she meets another love, why then we'll plainly see She's a false deluding lover, let her go, farewell she Take half a pound of reason, and one quarter pound of sense one small sprig of time and a little of prudence put them all together love and then you'll plainly see she's a false deluding lover let her go farewell she Cold winter, fare thee well, cold frost. Nothing have I gained, but my own true love I have lost. I'll sing and I'll be merry, if occasion I do see. And I'll rest when I am weary. Let her go, farewell she. Can I just remind everybody that when we unmute, when Caroline unmutes everybody, that not everybody gets unmuted. So uh, if you want to clap or make a comment or anything, just you just need to check whether you've been or you've un unmuted up at the end. It works for muting everybody, but it doesn't work for unmuting. Um, okay, Maggie, take it away, as they say. Caught <laughs> out. Oh, oh. A bit like David, I've transplanted across the Atlantic, but been thinking of uh, American songs, and it's so hot. I've been thinking of um, a Gene Ritchie song, Now is the Cool of the Day, um, and although it's um, the cool of the day is something we've been longing for in, uh, in Genesis 3-8, Sheila, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it's definitely um, uh-oh time as well for Adam and Eve. Uh, my Lord, he said unto me, 
Do you like my garden so fair? You may live in this garden if you keep the grasses green. And I'll return in the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. This earth is a garden, it's the garden of my Lord. And he walks in his garden in the cool of the day. My Lord, he said unto me, Do you like my garden so pure? You may live in this garden if you keep the waters clean. And I'll return in the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Oh, this earth is a garden, it's the garden of my Lord. And he walks in his garden in the cool of the day. My Lord, he said unto me, Do you like these pastures of green? You may live in this garden if you take care of my lambs, and I'll return in the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Oh, this earth is a garden. It's the garden of my Lord. And he walks in his garden in the cool of the day. My Lord, he said unto me, do you like my garden so free? You may live in this garden if you keep the people free. And I'll return in the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Oh, this earth is a garden, it's the garden of my Lord. And he walks in his garden in the cool of the day. Oh, uh, following that one, David, David Kidman, you've got to follow that one. And after David, I've got Margaret, please. Okay. I'm unmuted, yeah? Hear me okay? Good. <clears throat> I don't like to repeat songs that I sing too often, uh, but I did actually sing this one only a day or two ago. And I just feel like singing it again tonight. So apologies to those who've already heard it recently. It's a version of The Flowers of the Forest, which appears in the Songs of the Ridings volume by Mormon in an adaptation. It's rather a strange one, but quite a powerful one. Uh, much of it is, well, basically it's all in Yorkshire dialect. And it's actually entitled The Flowers of Knaresborough Forest. <clears throat> Daytime is weary, and dark or dusk dreary, for at last is old mist. Or a wrecking or hay went guy goom for stripping or the yowls for the clip 
happen. We think on our soldiers, and now gone read the way. The court in gates idle, and the lad flings his bridle. Oh. The yak stood, and slily comes seeking his mate. The trod by the river, as a green as a sliver, for the flowers all. Oh, Forest, I'm all stolen away. At Martinmas higher and never ribbons net tyrant. Oh, and God's pennies earned, and times come for play. And the cheap jacks, and the dancing. Oh, it teems to clogs a prancing. The flowers, oh, the Forest are all flown away. When at need church is a lousin, and told all that is a rousin, his soul. In our land, where he slumbered all day, West Heart bought we misses our lads' sons just kisses. Now the flowers all. Oh, the forest are gone right away. Plow lads from Panol have crossed over the channel. Shepherds from Fuston have taken the king's pay. Thackeray's from Dacor have sold every acre, and thou not find a dell. From Hover to Bray. When north wind is howling, and the west wind is yowling, it's for farm lads at sea. In the tower lost as a monterey. Tassie will not new begin, keeping a watch o'er his reign. A little jock in his forecastle, torpedoed. In the bay, oh, many a loss now is weeping, 
for her man that lies sleeping. No wrap for his corpse, but the cold Flanders clay. He'll ne'er lift his limbers. He'll ne'er win his gimmers. The flowers or the forest are a withered away. Oh, he'll ne'er lift his limbers. He'll ne'er win his gimmers. The flowers or the forest are withered away. Oh, nice one, David. David. <laughs> Very powerful. Thanks, David. Yeah, so I'm glad you chose to sing that one again. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Um, Margaret, I'm um, here. Hasn't got, uh, you'll, you'll sing to us without a picture, but we'll survive. Um, and yeah, we'll I think I explained that before. So we'll um, follow Margaret with um, Riggy, please. Oh, okay. Okay, Margaret. Oh, okay. Okay. Am, I, uh, am I muted or? You need to unmute yourself. You need to unmute, Margaret. Okay, can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, yes we can. Okay, little, the little gremlins. Um, this actually follows, um, I think, quite nicely what David sang, and I can't keep one session um, uh, um, straight uh, from a another. And but this, this is actually we just had a very the grim anniversaries of the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, so I decided to sing this one, um, written by Sidney Carter. And it's called Crow on the Cradle. The sheep's in the meadow, the cows in the corn. Now is a time for a child to be born. He'll cry at the moon and he'll laugh at the sun. If he's a boy he will carry a gun sang the crow on the cradle if it should be that our baby is a girl never you mind if her hair doesn't curl rings on her fingers bells on her toes a bomber above her wherever she goes sang the crow on the cradle rock a by baby the dark and the light somebody's baby is born for a fight rock a by baby the white and the black somebody's baby is not coming back sang the crow on the cradle your mother and father they'll scrape and they'll save build you a coffin and dig you a grave 
rock by little one, why do you weep? We have a toy that will put you to sleep, sang the crow on the cradle. Bring me a gun and I'll shoot that bird dead. That's what your father and mother once said. Crow on the cradle, what shall I do? That is a thing that I leave up to you, sang the crow on the cradle. That's it. Beautiful. That was beautiful, Margaret. Thank you. Uh, uh, who, who's that? Tara, did I say you next? I think I did. Are you with us or have you upgraded? Are you sure you said me? I thought you, you said, said it was Ricky. Oh, I think yeah. I did say it was Ricky. Yeah, I beg your pardon. Ricky was followed by Tara. Sorry. So I I'm, I'm unmuted. Yep. I, I got a new toy a week ago. It's an old toy to some of you. It's little. And I will do a, uh, a song you might know. Sweet chimney sweep, it's the common cry I keep. If you can but rightly understand me. Sweet chimney sweep, it's the common cry I keep. If you can but rightly understand me. With my dust broom and my rake, with my dust broom and my rake, see what cleanly work I make. With my oh, 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 and my oh, and it's sweet chimney. sleep out of your eyes go oh, and fetch me some air that I might swallow rise girls arise wipe the sleep out of your eyes oh, go and fetch me some air that I might swallow I can rise up to the top, I can rise up to the top, without a ladder or a rope, and it's there you, there you, there you, and there you, and it's there you. Well, hear me halloo. Here I do stand with my hole in my hand, like some soldier who's on sentry. a soldier who's on sentry. I will work for a better sort. I will work for a better sort. 
and kindly thank them for it. I'll work, 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 and I'll work. I'll work for none but gentry. Copper family. So maybe he's not just a chimney climber, climber up to chimney chimneys, but he's maybe he's a social climber too. <laughs> right, only work for gentry, right? Only work for gentry, yes. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thanks, Riggy. That was lovely. Um, we have Tara, and then after Tara, John White, please. I don't know what to sing. <laughs> um, I wanted to sing something happy because, well, you know, let's be happy. Um, but I couldn't, I don't know. So I was thinking of doing a Breton one. And then I was thinking of doing this Ukrainian vodka song, which is really, really great. Um, and then, well, I don't know. After hearing all the songs, I'm thinking I might do something else. So <laughs> I'm going to do, um, what am I going to do? I'll do a little bit of. Um... We lost you. Or oh. you. You Can you still out. hear me? Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Now, um, yes. my, my, my microphone is obviously editing out, editing out the boring bits. <laughs> so um, what should I sing? Yeah, okay, well, we'll, we'll just do for this little Breton one. I'll just do a few verses of it. It's a Breton song for dancing. I don't think there'll be any Breton dancing for a very, very long time with the COVID, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but uh, if you want to stand up at home and dance the uh, Larry Day to this one, you can. So. Quand j'étais chez mon père, yuppalari dans les den, yuppalari dans les day. Quand j'étais chez mon père, yuppalari dans les den, yuppalari dans les day. Je n'en me marie, yuppalari dans les den. Je n'en me marie, yuppalari dans les day. Je n'en me marie, yuppalari dans les den. Je n'en me marie, yuppalari dans les day. Je n'avais rien à faire, yuppalari dans les den, yuppalari dans les day. Je n'avais rien à faire, yuppalari dans les den, yuppalari dans les day. Kuna fam ashashe palari don de den kuna fam ashashe palari don de kuna fam ashashe palari don de den kuna fam ashashe palari don de un jour j'en trouve une y palari don de den y palari don de den un jour j'en trouve une y palari don de den y palari don de den elle n'avait rien à faire y palari don de den elle n'avait rien à faire y palari don de elle n'avait rien à faire y palari don de den elle n'avait rien à faire Yuppalari dandi, shall we demand the bella? Yuppalari dandi, then the Yuppalari dandi, shall we demand the bella? Yuppalari dandi, then the Yuppalari dandi, but to my marie, a palari dandi, then the vet to the marie, a palari dandi, but to my marie, a palari dandi, then the vet to the marie, a palari dandi. I won't continue. Usually there's two people singing that thing, so. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Tara. That was nicely jolly. Um, and we'll have uh, next, we're going to have John White, followed by Martin Nail. Um, John. I'll unmute you now. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to unmute you. You won't unmute at the moment. Caroline, can you unmute John? I'm, I'm trying, but it's not working for me either. All I can do oh, is dear. ask to unmute and John is not doing it. Well, John doesn't can't, uh, find a button. John, we're gonna have to pause you because uh, um, we can't unmute you at the moment. Maybe when um, James might be able to do so. No, James can't do it either. Okay, I'm really sorry, John. Um, but uh, so, Martin, can you sing us a song? Yes, I can. He's 
you just need to unmute yourself as yes, well. Yes, I have. Yes. Cool. These things have a mind of their own, don't they? Right, okay, this isn't, uh, we seem to have had a few music hall songs tonight, which this, strictly speaking, is not, because it was um, written by a man called Corny Grain, who performed um, in a sort of, what was a sort of slightly more upper, well, no, more middle class form of entertainment that run by some people called the German Reeds, um, uh, along with people, similar performers like um, George Grossmith, who weren't, who were the same period, but weren't, that didn't actually pre <clears throat> perform in the halls. And this is probably one Corny Graham, Graham's best known song. And I'm singing it because I didn't go to Sydney. Um, so, I haven't actually been to the seaside at all. <clears throat> well, now, what do you think? Now, what do you think? I've been to the seaside. I saw a four horse share a bang. Thinks I'll take a ride. Well, the fair, you know, it was 18 pence. That's a lot of money for me. But you can't do things on the cheap now, can you, when you're in society? You can't do things on the cheap now, can you, when you're in society? The company was very choice, not haughty, like or proud, and always affable and nice and never nothing loud. But I'll tell you straight, I'll tell you straight, for I'll always speak to my mind. Oh, what I liked about that party was they was all of them so refined. Oh, what I liked about that party was they was all of them so refined. Chorus, right? On this whole I say, we was that day. You should have heard us how we sang. With a high, 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 get out of the way of the four old Sharabang. There was ten old ladies all sitting of a row, each sucking of a peppermint drawer. And each of them had something she called homemade ginger pop. There was fine young gents with their arms round the waist of fine young women as sang. I tiddly, I tie the old of the way aboard that sharabang. I tiddly, I tie the old of the way aboard that sharabang. There was one young gent with a concertina. I'll tell you, he could. Play. And when he gave us home sweet home, it nearly made me cry. Then he played a bit of a funeral march, it was sad, but never mind. Oh, that high class music is a little melancholy, but it's always so refined. That high class music is a little melancholy, but it's always so refined. And it's always say we was that day, you should have heard us how we sang. With a high, 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 get out of the way of the poor old Sharabang. There was one old lady said to me, young man, would you like to try a drop? She says it's very comforting, this homemade ginger pop. She says it's only the peppermint as makes it taste that strong. I says you're a nice old cup of tea. She says I'll go along. I says you're a nice old cup of tea. She says I'll go along. She'd a green plush hat with a large sunflower and a feather of heavenly blue. And she says, young man, I'm thinking that my hat would just suit you. So we both changed hats for now. They laughed and chaffed, but never mind. Oh, what I liked about that party was they was all of them so refined. Oh, what I liked about that party was they was all of them so refined. And it's always day, we was that day, you should have heard us how we sang. 
where the high, 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 get out of the way of the poor old Sharabang. And it's all oh, I say, we was that day, you should have heard us how we sang. Where the high, 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 get out of the way of the poor Sharabang. When you sang that, I thought of you can do a lot of things of the seaside that you can't do. <laughs> the uh, you know, I heard Stanley Holloway sing that. I don't know what who would. Oh. That was a while ago. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. That chair is long. The yeah. seaside, the yeah. nice bit of the seaside, isn't it? Um. Uh, sorry, I didn't uh, give a uh, heads up to uh, after Martin. So, Pal, can I ask you to sing us a song? And that will be followed by Eleanor and Sam. Okay. I got this version of this song from Karen Casey and she does it a little bit more quickly than people are used to, so it's just as well you don't join in the chorus. <clears throat> I'm a fallen weaver as a many a man knows Now to eat and I've worn out my clothes Clocks are both broken and stockings I've none Yet hardly give me tuppence for all I've got on Old Billy at Benz, he kept telling me long. We might have better times if I'd but had. But I'll soon starve to death. I'm a falling weaver, as many a man knows. Now to eat and I've worn out my clothes Clocks are both broken and stockings I've none You'd hardly give me tuppence for all I've got on We held out for six weeks, thought each day was the last Carried and shipped it till now we're quite fast Lived upon nettles when nettles were good and water the porridge was the best of our food. I'm a fallen weaver, as many a man knows. Now to eat and I've worn out my clothes. Clogs are both broken and stockings I've none. You'd hardly give me tuppence for all I've got on. Now Margaret declares if she clothes to put on. She'd go up to London and see the great man And if things didn't alter when there she had been She swears she'll fight with blood up to die I'm a poor loom weaver as many a man knows Now to eat and I've worn out my clothes Stockings I've none and no looms to weave on for I've woven myself to the foreign. I've woven myself to the foreign. I've woven myself to the foreign. Woven myself to the foreign. That's good. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely, Carl. I like that version. Um, Eleanor and, and Sam, uh, if you'd like to follow that. And that will, uh, Caroline, can you follow Eleanor and Sam? Oh. <coughs> Can you unmute yourselves, guys? Sorry. Right, uh, a frivolous little number all the way from Australia. One night when travelling sheep, my companions lay asleep. There was not a star to illuminate the sky. I was dreaming, I suppose, 
from me eyes were partly closed, when a very strange procession passed me by. First there came a kangaroo with his swag of blankets blue, a dingo ran beside him as his mate. They were travelling mighty fast, but they shouted as they passed, We'll have to be jogging along, it's getting late. Then, three frogs from out the swamp, where the atmosphere is damp, came bounding in and sat upon the stones. They each unrolled their swags and produced some little bags, the violin, the banjo and the bones. Then the little bandicoot played a tune upon his flute. Some koala bears came down and formed a ring, the goanna and the snake and the adder wide awake, then amused the company with a highland fling. Then the parrot, green and blue, gave the orchestra its cue, and an alligator danced the soldier's joy. In the spreading silky oak, the jackass cracked a joke, and the magpie sang the wild colonial boy. Then the emu, standing near, put his claw up to his ear, sang rocking in the cradle of the deep. Of the deep. When the boss beneath the cart woke me up with such a start, Yelling, Clancy, where the hell's the flaming sheep? The drover's dream. Was it was it Berland who always used to sing that and go into a car on with the, the you know with his claw up to his ear? Someone did. I think it was Berland. Can't remember. No, I no, I no idea. Only Rose. Was it? Tony Rose. I also heard Ian Campbell folk group at an old record where the Ian Campbell folk group oh, sat in the sixties. Yeah, that that was one of that was one of Bert's. I think. Well, I mean, that's who. Well, Bert sang it too. Bert sang it too. I've, that's right. Yeah, I think I think most people who learned it learned it from Bert. Yeah. Yeah, Martin Wyndham Reid as well. I think. Yeah. Um, Eleanor, are you going to give us one? Um, Eleanor? Yes, yes. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, I'll... We lost you, or whoever was the MC. The MC. Okay. Um, okay, start again. Well, it's of a sea captain who sailed the salt sea, and the moon it shone gentle and clear. Oh, I'll die, I'll die, this captain did cry, if I can't have that maid who walks on the shore, if I can't have that maid on the shore. Well, I have got silver, and I have got gold, and I've plenty of costly fine wear, oh, and I'll give half to you, all me gallant young crew, if you'll fetch me that girl who walks on the shore, if you fetch me that girl on the shore. So the sailors, they got them a very long boat, and off for the shore they did steer, oh, saying, ma'am, if you please, will you enter on board, for to view a fine cargo of costly ware, for to view a fine cargo of ware. With much persuading they got her on board, and the moon it shone gentle and clear, oh. She sat herself down in the stern of the boat, and back for the ship those young sailors did steer, and back for the ship they did steer. And when they rove alongside of the ship, the captain he spat out his chew, oh, saying, first you will lie in my arms all this night, and then I'll give you to me jolly young crew, and then I'll give you to me crew. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, this young girl, she cried, that's just what I've been waiting for, oh, for I've grown so weary of my maidenhead, 
As I walked all alone on me rocky old shore, as I walked all alone on the shore. Then she sat herself down in the stern of the ship, and the moon it shone gentle and clear. Oh, she sang so sweet and so neat and complete, she sang sailors and captain right fast asleep. She sang sailors and captain asleep. Then she's robbed them of silver. She's robbed them of gold. She's plundered that costly fine wear. Oh, the captain's broad sword she's took for an oar. And she's paddled right back to her rocky old shore. And she's paddled right back to her shore. Oh, were me men drunk, or were me men mad, or were they sunk deep in despair? Oh, that they let her away with her beauty so gay. And the sailors all wished that that sweet maid was there. How the sailors all wished she was there. No, your men, they weren't drunk, nor your men, they weren't mad, nor were they sunk deep in despair. Oh, but I deluded your crew, and likewise yourself too, Captain. Now I'm a maid on me rocky old shore. I'm a maid once again on the shore. Maid on the shore. I'll show you which. Thank you for that. That was lovely. Um, Caroline? If you could give us one and do the muting and what have you, and followed by Stacey Roth, please. Okay. Um, should I do? Now you must answer my questions, nine. Sing 99 and 90. For you aren't gods, you are one of mine. And who is the weaver's bonny? What is whiter than the milk? Sing ninety-nine and ninety, and what is softer than the silk? And who is the weaver's bonny? Snow is whiter than the milk. Sing ninety-nine and ninety, and down is softer than the silk. And I am the weaver's bonny. What is higher than a tree? Sing ninety-nine and ninety, and what is deeper than the sea? And who is the weaver's bonny? Heaven's higher than a tree. Sing ninety-nine and ninety, as hell is deeper than the sea. And I am the weaver's bonny. What is louder than a horn? Sing ninety-nine and ninety, and what is sharper than a thorn? And who is the weaver's bonny? Thunder's louder than a horn. Sing ninety-nine and ninety, and death is sharper than a thorn. And I am the weaver's bonny. What's more innocent than a lamb? Sing ninety-nine and ninety, and what is meaner than mankind? And who is the weaver's bonny? A babe's more innocent than a lamb. Sing ninety-nine and ninety, and devil's meaner than mankind. And I am the weaver's body. Now you have answered my questions nine. Sing ninety-nine and ninety, for you are gods, you aren't one of mine. And you are the weaver's body. Mm, lovely. Oh.
right? Can everyone hear me? Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. My name is... Sorry, you need to unmute yourself. Um, I just, um, I was late. Got it. That's okay. Uh, I live in Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania, which is post-World War II housing that was built for uh, workers of U.S. steel uh, back in the 50s. And my father-in-law worked for the steel mill and my husband worked for the steel mill for part of his career as well. And I wanted to thank you for welcoming me into your sing. It's afternoon here, late afternoon in southeast Pennsylvania. I live about uh, 27 miles from Philadelphia, actually closer to Trenton, New Jersey. And for my first song here, I wanted to find something local. So I'm going with a song that was written by an anonymous Philadelphian and appeared in the Pennsylvania packet of January 3rd, 1774. It discussed an incident that occurred a couple of weeks before then up in Boston. A little bit of an incident where a lot of tea was destroyed. Known today as the Boston Tea Party. And uh, there's only one thing I'd like to explain first about this song. There is a verse that invokes the ghosts of John Hampton and Algernon Sidney. Two figures that may be familiar to many of you, but are not to people in U.S. audiences. John Hampton was a tax protester during the reign of Charles I, who was imprisoned. And Algernon Sidney wrote Discourses in Government, where he was against uh, the divine right of kings and argued that a corrupt government can be overturned by its population. In other words, he wrote the playbook for the American Revolution. So here we go. The song is called As Near Beauteous Boston Line. I'm just going to give myself a starting note here. As near beauteous Boston lying On the gently swelling flood Without jack or pendant flying Three ill-fated tea ships stood Just as glorious Saul was setting On her wharf a numerous crew Sons of freedom, fear forgetting Suddenly appeared in view Armed with hammers, axes, chisels, weapons new for warlike deed, toward the herbage freighted vessels they approached with dreadful speed. O'er their heads aloft in mid sky, three bright angel forms were seen. This was Hampton, that was Sydney, with fair liberty between. Soon they cried, your foes you'll banish, soon the triumph shall be won. Scarce shall setting Phoebus vanish, ere the deathless deed be done. Quick as thought the ships were boarded, hatches burst and chest displayed. Axes, hammers, help afforded, what a glorious crash they made. Squash into the deep descended, cursed weed of China's coast. Thus at once our fears were ended, British right shall ne'er be lost. Captains, once more hoist your streamers, spread your sails and plow the wave. Tell your masters they were dreamers when they thought to cheat the brave. Tell your masters they were dreamers when they thought they could cheat the brave. Wow. There you go. No taxation without representation. There's still a lot of that these days. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was, that was a good one, Stacey. Thanks very much. That was lovely. Brilliant. Um, we're coming up to the half time. Um, Alison, would you give us a song and then we'll have a break? Okay. 
Um, so I'm going to do a song which is kind of two songs put together. Um, the uh, Road to Dundee and Sweet Carn Loch Fay. I kind of um, stole bits and pieces from the Road to Dundee because I didn't quite like all the words to Sweet Carn Loch Fay. Uh, so anyway, here it goes. It's quite a nice little song, actually, nothing miserable. <clears throat> When the winter was brawling our high hills and mountains And dark were the clouds o'er the deep rolling sea I spied a young lassie as daylight was dawning She was asking the road to sweet Carnlock well, I said, my wee lassie, I cannot well tell you the number of miles or how far it might be. But if you'll permit me, I'll go along with you and I'll show you the road to sweet Carnlock. She kindly consented and gave me her arm In through the churchyard and down by the sea We listened a while to hear the sad wind cry As we journeyed the road to sweet Carnlock at length with the high hills and mountains behind us the boats and the harbour in full view did see she said gentle sir i will never forget you for showing me the road to sweet Carnlock Bay. Well, I took a gold pin from the scarf at my bosom. Take this sweet lassie in remembrance of me. She lifted her lips and I kissed them right strongly as we said our farewells at Sweet Carnock Bay. So here's to the lassie, I'll never forget her. Her beauty so fair and enchanting to me. My heart gives a leap when I hear the sad wean cry. And I journey the road to sweet Carnock Bay. <laughs> We'll be back and up and running in 10 minutes. If you want to chat to each other, if ever you mute yourselves, unless you want to chat to somebody. Okay? For us? Sure, yes. Um, okay, well, we'll mute everybody and then you'll have to unmute yourself. Caroline, are you there? Yes, she is. Oh. What will I do? Right. So I've got to unmute myself. I am unmuted. There we go. Um, I'm actually uh, I'm actually from Birmingham, guys. Um, but I if I if I've got a strange accent, it's because I've been living in Vancouver, Canada, since 1980. So, um, and what I was going to do for you was a Canadian song. If I can find it, just hang on a second. 
Um, where are we? Which one shall I do? Um, just hang on a second. And I'll find it. Find my choices here. Here we go. So this song, guys, um, I don't know how many of you know, know much about Canada. In, uh, anybody know the Canadian National Anthem? I'm sure yes. you do. Yes. <laughs> uh, this song, in, in the 1980s, Can Canadians were asked publicly if they could have an alternative to the National Anthem, which one would it be? And this is the one that they chose. This actually was written in 1981, and it's a song that recalls the history of the early explorers who were trying to discover a route across Canada to the Pacific Ocean. However, its central theme really is a comparison between the journeys of these past explorers and the singer's own journey to and through the same region in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, it mentions a number of famous Canadian explorers, a lot of them are British. Henry Kelsey was an English explorer and trader who was apprenticed to the Hudson's Bay Company in 1684. Northwest Passage. <laughs> okay, you all know about it, fair enough. Uh, but some people may not. <laughs> um, Alexander Mackenzie, a Scottish explorer who canoed from Lake Athabasca down the, uh, down the, uh, the Decho, later the Mackenzie River. David Thompson, a British Canadian fur trader. John Franklin, a British Royal Naval officer who attempted to chart the Northwest Passage in 1845, unsuccessfully. So many of you probably know this song, so you can join on the course, even though we can't hear you. Westward from the Davis Strait, it was there was said to lie the sea route to the Orient, for which so many died. Seeking gold and glory, leaving weathered broken bones, and a long forgotten, lonely care stone. Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea, tracing one warm line through a land so wild and savage to make the Northwest Passage to the sea. Three centuries thereafter, I take passage over land in the footsteps of Great Kelsey, where his sea of flowers began. Watching the cities rise before me and then behind me sink again. This tardiest explorer driving hard across the plain. Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage To find the hand of Franklin Reaching for the Beaufort Sea Tracing one warm line Through a land so wide and savage And make a Northwest Passage to the sea and through the night, behind the wheel, the mileage clicking west. I think upon Mackenzie, the David Thompson, and the rest. Who cracked the mountain ramparts, and it showed a path for me. To race the roaring Fraser to the sea. Ah, for just one time, I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea, tracing one warm line through a land so wild and savage, and make the Northwest Passage. 
to the sea. How then am I so different from these first men through this way? Like them, I left a settled life. I threw it all away to seek the Northwest Passage and the call of many men to find their bat the road back home again. Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea, tracing one warm line through a land so wild and savage and make the Northwest Passage to the sea. I do like Thank you for having um, me. Can I uh, can I just remind people okay. that um, when when so it's someone's turn to sing, everybody gets muted and the singer has to unmute themselves. And after they finish, um, Caroline un presses the unmute button for everyone, but everyone isn't unmuted. Only some people are. So you have to unmute yourself in order to clap or speak or do anything in between songs. For some reason, it doesn't work. Both there ways. is no okay. speakers unmutable. Oh. Have to, everyone has to unmute themselves. I can't actually do that. Yeah. Um, so Bev, can you? Uh, you've uh, you've not have you you've been here before? Were you here last week? No. no. Oh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> anyway, Bev, give us a song, and after you, we'll have Tom Finn, please. All right. Uh... Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Right. I have, and I was looking for some. I had some lyrics pulled up here, and just to, in case I forget something, and of course they went away. Uh, <laughs> no one, well, a few people may have heard this song, but my husband wrote it some time ago. The late husband. <sighs> Tarzan, man of junk. <clears throat> I'll start that again. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Tarzan, man of jungle fame, had little clothing to his name. Sometimes while swinging through the trees, his garment wound up round his knees. That's pretty low. But Bel Velcro, Velcro banished all his woes. Easy open, easy close. Velcro came and saved the day. For Velcro now we shout hooray. In Rome, a sheet draped on your form was the day's sartorial norm. But it often was a Roman's plight, how to keep one's toga tight. But Velcro banished all their woes, easy open, easy close. Velcro came and saved the day, for Velcro now we shout hooray. Sister Mary felt the call, but when she went into the stall, her habit was so cumbersome, Undressing was so bothersome, but Velcro banished all her woes. Easy open, easy close. Velcro came and saved the day, for Velcro now we shout hooray. Even Adam, they did sin, they left the garden in their skin. From nakedness they sought relief, but how to fasten that small fig leaf? But Velcro banished all their woes, easy open, easy close. Velcro came and saved the day, for Velcro now they shout hooray. The Dalai Lama wears a robe, dressed in just that he roams the globe. He travels here, he travels there, to keep it closed he says a prayer. But Velcro banished all his woes, easy open, easy close. Velcro came and saved the day, for Velcro now we shout hooray. Sir Lancelot in days of yore, his armor made it hard to score. It took an hour to get undressed, by then the maidens had lost their zest. 
But Velcro banished all his woes. Easy open, easy close. Velcro came and saved the day. For Velcro now we shout hooray. Mahatma Gandhi, holy man, had trouble when he first began. His loincloth didn't have a belt. It showed his manhood when he knelt. But Velcro vanished all his woes. Easy open, easy close. Velcro came and saved the day. For Velcro now we shout hooray. Velcro. Hooray! Hooray! Let me show you something. I watched it. Yes, there's Velcro everywhere, Elizabeth. I made it. I, I just love what he did with it. I, I I helped him out on a couple of those verses, but mostly it was his. And, and strangely enough, the tune is "Sweet Hour of Prayer." <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I've, never, I've never heard a song about velcro so thank you very much Beth. <laughs> You're <laughs> Tom, i do like uh, songs about that, unexpected um, topics by Anne. did you get that tom Okay. Okay. You, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Good. Right. This is uh, a song called uh, "John of Dreams," which is uh, you might know. It's uh, by Bill Caddick, who was uh, a Wolverhampton-based uh, singer-songwriter, and it was a song that became very popular in Ireland. I think anybody who was anybody in Ireland in uh, in uh, the singing game recorded uh, "John of Dreams." So I'll give it a I'll give it a go. <laughs> When midnight, <clears throat> when midnight comes and people homeward thread, seek now your blankets and your feather bed. Home comes the rover, his journeys over yield up the night time to old john o dreams yield up the night time to old john o dreams across the hills the sun it has gone astray tomorrow's cares are many dreams away the stars are flying your candles dying yield up the darkness to old john o dreams yield up the darkness to old john o dreams both man and master in the night are one. All things are equal when the day is done. The prince, the plowman, the slave, the free man, all find their comfort in old John old dreams. All find their comfort in old John old dreams. When sleep it comes and dreams come running clear, the hawks of morning cannot reach you here. Sleep is a river 
flow on forever. And for your boatman, choose old John O'Dreams. And for your boatman, choose old John O'Dreams. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Smashing. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, Anne, Anne Lam, uh, followed by Jan, please. That's it. Okay. Well, this is a song that I got from the singing of Johnny Handel, and he got it from a traditional Northumbrian poem. Gan to the kai with me, my love. Gan to the kai with me. Gan to the kai with me, my love. And I'll be merry with thee. Was she not worthy of kisses? Was she not worthy of three? Was she not worthy of kisses? I gave to the kai with me. Gone to the kai with me, my love. Gone to the kai with me. Gone to the kai with me, my love, and I'll be merry with thee. Bonnie lass, I love you well. Bonnie lad, I love you better. Will ye cast off your hose and shoes? To carry me out of water. Gun to the kai with me, my love. Gun to the kai with me. Gun to the kai with me, my love. And I'll be merry with thee. I have a host and kai, and he owes a yonder one. But I have a lust to take him, and that pleases me best of all. Gun to the kai with me, my love. Gun to the kai with me. Gun to the kai with me, my love, and I'll be merry with thee. And if we should have a bit bare, through love between thee and me. Well, I have a canny of mother to dandle him on her knee. to the kai with me, my love. Gan to the kai with me. Gan to the kai with me, my love. And I'll be merry with thee. Hello, Livy, are you there? This is John White. John, you're on hey. the call. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay. John. All right. I'll, I'll stand by. Thanks. Stand by. The trouble is that in order for you to sing, we're going to have to mute everybody, and we'll 
hopefully be able to unmute you from that. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, Caroline, if you mute everybody, I'll uh, try and unmute John. Oh, 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 straight away now. Yes, let's do oh. it while we can. Oh, right now. Okay, fine. Okay. Hmm. When you're ready. John, you should be on mute. One, two, three, four, five. Go. Okay. Yep. Right. We've we've had some uh, humorous songs uh, this evening, and so here's a, a, another one, but a rather special brand of humour, a bit of very dry Yorkshire humour from uh, uh, dear old Mike Watson, and it's a song called Young Dick. Young Dick was as honest a labouring lad as ever worked on a farm. He was fun, he did the daftest things, but he never once did no harm. He went up to the farmer's house at eight o'clock one night. He said, I'm going to court you. Can I borrow a paraffin lamp tonight? Can I borrow a paraffin lamp? The farmer slyly winked at him and said in voice so low, Going court in with a paraffin lamp. That's liable to be slow. I courted my missus for three long years and never once took a light. I know, said Dick, I've seen you, missus. I'm taking a light to light to light. I'm taking a light to night. Young Dick, he was planting potatoes. He was mocking them quite a lot. Because the farmer, he had told him they was quite a greedy crop. Just then it started sliding down and lightning filled the sky. So they went up to the farmhouse for a meat and tater pie, a pie, a meat and tater pie. Young Dick was given an enormous lump, but with never a sign of meat. The farmer smiled and said to him, now how do you like a treat? Well, you're right about those potatoes, boss. Their appetites can't be beat. For the crust and the gravy is marvellous. But those tatties have eat me meat, me meat. Those tatties have eat me meat. Young Dicky was quiet, was scuffling turnips when the oyster he had dropped dead. So the farmer went to market to buy another one in his stead. The one he bought was far rather thin, covered all over in mud, but the chap said he was willing enough. He just didn't look too good, too good. He just didn't look too good. Young Dickie was scuffling turnips again when the horse rammed into a tree. The farmer swore that he'd been robbed. He's as blind as blind can be. Now you ain't been robbed, said Dick to me. You just misunderstood. But the chap he told you he was willing enough. He just didn't look too good, too good. He just didn't look too good. Dickie went after another job about ten miles away. Standing before the farmhouse door, he heard the gaffer say, You must rise at dawn, work hard all day, stand with cup in hand. And if you haven't no testimonials, you never will work my land, my land, you never will work my land. He had a word with the other chaps, then he went back, cap on head. Standing before that farmer's door is the very words he said, I've a bucket of testimonials. They're not very good, it's true. They're greed, bad manners and ignorance. And they all belong to you, to you, they all belong to you. Now, Dickie played the bass drum pony in the village temperance band. Marching around in his uniform, he looked so fine and grand. But in half an hour, he was shell shocked, thought his time had come. For his left hand look was only a foot from the man with the big bass drum, bass drum, the man with the big bass drum. A lady who was passing by put a five pound note in the hat. Turning round, she smiled at Dick. Can I choose a hymn for that? You can, said Dick, that's right enough. Young the tidy sum. And if I were you, the hymn I choose is him with the big bass drum, bass drum. 
is him with the big bass drum. Young Dick. Yay. 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 John, thanks. I'm glad you got it sorted out for us. Yes, uh, thanks ever so much for being so patient. Lovely. <laughs> okay, well, Jan, if you could follow that, followed by Kathy, please. Okay, well, I've just... Unmute yourself, please, Jan. Okay. I've, I've just checked my thermometer and it's 29 in Waltham Abbey in Essex still, so I'm melting. So this is, this is, well, uh, I hope you regard it as a folk song. It's a 1920s Bessie Smith. I regard it as a folk song. So, now dancing may do this and that and help you take off loads of fat. But I'm no fan of dancing when it's hot. But if you are a dancing fool, just got to dance and can't keep cool. Here's a little idea I've got. When it gets too hot for dancing and you can't get ice cream cold, take no sin to take off your skin, dance around in your bones. Take, oh God, now I've forgotten the words. How stupid. When it gets too hot for dancing and you can't get ice cream cones, take no sin to take off your skin, dance around in your bones. Polar bears agree up in Greenland, they've got the right idea. They sink a paid and refrigerate, or we all cremate down here. Just be like those bamboo babies in the South Sea tropic zones. Ain't no sin, Just take off skin, dance around in your bones. When you're on a crowded dance floor and the music gently moans, Ain't no sin to take off skin, dance around in your bones. Take a look at the girls on the dance floor, notice the way they're dressed. Roll down their hoes right down to their toes, nobody knows the rest. When a girl wears x-ray dresses, shows everything she owns. Ain't no sin, take off skin, dance around in your bones, I say. Dance around in your bones. Sit. Well, I guess people could turn off their video and do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Unless, unless we've got a bunch of nudists here. Naturists, actually. We're called naturists. That's right. Yes. It's that old pagans who dance to the moon in the nude. Yeah. Well, I used to be, there was a therapy institute called SLM, which I guess still exists, and people used to be in the nude in the um, mineral springs, and you could walk around and in the nude and you, the, or get a massage, but that would be all you would get. Um, they, they still yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did that I in, I guess it was in the early 80s, I was at SLM for a week for a short workshop. Excellent, excellent. I'm, I'm uh, old hippie, uh, but can we, um, all right. move to um, move to um, Jan? Uh, no, we're done, Jan. Sorry, Kathy, uh, followed by um, James, please. Okay, um, last year was the bicentenary of the uh, Battle of Peterloo. We've lost, uh, we've lost your um, uh, video, Kathy. Oh, I don't know why. We can't see you. Oh, sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Just sort of tell you. <laughs> Makes no odds to the song, anyway. So, Battle of Peterloo. <laughs> yeah. Ties in with uh, the one that Pal sang earlier. On Peter's Field in Manchester in year 1819, when cotton folk of Lancashire in protest did combine, corn laws had brought them crippling tax 
and price of food never broke folks back and set our life the smouldering flax and bristled many a spy. Salute once more these men of yore who were to conscience true and give their blood for common good and field of Peterloo. The sixteenth day of August brought the sound of marching feet when workers twenty thousand strong on Peter's field did meet. From monsters in an upstairs room the magistrates looked down with gloom and scoffed this rubble of the loom vengeance they thought is sweet. Salute once more these men of yours who were to conscience true, but give the blood for common God on field of Peterloo. Then riot act was garbled out at Parson Hayes' command. For this Sir Rochdale vicar made with riches living in land. But folk at meet in the venue of the riot act till the bugles blew, and mounted redcoats come in view with sabres in their hand. Salute once more these men of yore who were to conscience true, and give their blood for common good on fields of Peterloo. The soldiers mark folks down like flies, their sabres dripped with blood. They spared no man or woman's cry, but pierced them where they stood. Many dead that day were named, and hundreds more were hurt and lame. While tyrants watching unashamed said it to do them good. Salute once more these men of yore who were to conscience true and give their blood for common good on the field of Peterloo. For many a year folks struggled on till 1832. Reform might come, corn laws were done and food was cheaper too. John Bright and Cobden paved the way, and now at Peter's fields once lay. The free trade hall, it stands today on the field of Peterloo. Salute once more these men of yore, who were to conscience true, and give their blood for common good on the field of Peterloo. This fine hall is stood intact till the new millennium turn, built with cotton money to recall the terrible lessons learned. But rich developers bought the land, on Peter's field a hotel was planned, where the workers fell, just the plot now stands on the field of Peterloo. Salute once more these men of yore who were to conscience true and give their blood for common God on field of Peterloo. Peterloo. Thank you. Uh, James, can you follow that please? And then after James, Wendy, please. I can try and follow that. Um, there was some mention of Martin Wyndham Reid earlier, and we had an Australian song, so here's another one. 
that I got from Martin Wyndham Reid. It's actually a poem by Henry Lawson, the Bush poet, put to music by uh, someone from the Bushwhackers, I think. Ten miles down Reedy River, a pool of water lies, and all the year it mirrors the changes in the skies. Within that pool's broad bosom is room for all the stars, and the bed of sand has drifted over countless rocky bars. Around the lower edges there waves a bed of reeds Where water rats lie hidden and where the wild duck breeds Where grassy slopes rise gently to ridges long and low Where groves of wattle flourish and native bluebells grow Beneath the granite ridges the eye can just discern Where rocky creek emerges from deep green banks of fern And standing tall between them the grassy she-oaks cool The hard blue tinted waters before they reach the pool Ten miles down Reedy River, one Sunday afternoon, I rode with Mary Campbell to that broad, bright lagoon. We left our horses grazing while shadows climbed the peak and strolled beneath the she-oaks on the banks of Rocky Creek. Then home along the river, that night we rode a race, and the moonlight lent a glory to Mary Campbell's face. I pleaded for our future all through that moonlight ride, until our weary horses drew closer side by side. Ten miles from Ryan's Crossing and five below the peak, I built a little homestead on the banks of Rocky Creek. I cleared the land and I fenced it, and I ploughed the rich red loam. And my first crop was golden when I brought my Mary home. Now still down Reedy River, the grassy she-oaks sigh. The water hole still mirrors the pictures in the sky. The golden sand is drifting across the rocky bars, and over all forever go sun and moon and stars. But of the hut I builded, there are no traces now, and many rains have levelled the furrows of my plough. The glad bright days have vanished, for sombre branches wave. Their wattle blossoms golden above my Mary's grave. Ten miles down Reedy River, a pool of water lies, and all the year it mirrors the changes in the skies. The bed of sand has drifted o'er countless rocky bars, and in that pool's broad bosom is room for all the stars. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely, oh, Jamie. Yeah. Very nice. That was lovely, Jamie. Really nice. Yeah, no, it's thank you. Smashing. Thank you. That's good. Um, w Wendy, can you give us a song, please? And then Kate, can you follow Wendy, please? Okay. Um, I may be stretching the bounds of folk as well. Um, I'm going to go. Um, country so this is a cindy walker song um anyway you give your hand to me and then you say hello and i can hardly speak my heart is beating so and anyone can tell you think you know me well well you don't know me no you don't know the one who dreams of you at night and longs to kiss your lips and longs to hold you tight to you i'm just a friend that's all i'll ever be 
because you don't know me. For I never knew the art of making love, though my heart aches with love for you. Afraid and shy, I let my chance go by, a chance that you might love me too. You give your hand to me, and then you say goodbye. I watch you walk away, and I still wonder why. Oh, no, you'll never know the one who loved you so. Oh, you don't know me. That was so lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Um, Kate, are you ready to give us one? You can. You'll unmute when when we're all muted. Letting Al do the tech. Okay. And after after Kate, we'll have uh, Gwyneth, please. Okay. Am I unmuted? You yep. are. Lovely. Well, um, um, I thought uh, it's following on from a song which was sung early by Maggie, The Cool of the Day, which I was kind of working up into something because of the appropriateness of it. And then I thought, well, this is another one that follows on from that theme in a sort of strange way. I tried to sign up for Sandra Kerr's choir last week but it was very confusing on the website and I was too late so I shall sing one of her songs instead I'm hoping it will sing itself because I haven't practiced very much so <laughs> The Lord, he planted out a garden, east of Eden, so they say, and then from dust created Adam, saying, you Lord of you that you survey. He took a rib from Adam's right side, and then he closes up the flesh, saying, Adam, look upon the bright side. This is Eve, she'll clear up all the mess, because it's boring, hell of a boring. Eve won't mind, she's more inclined to do the choring. She will clear those apples in the lake, clear them fig leaves with a rake, and don't forget to feed the snake, because it's boring. Uh, boring. The Lord, he made one of his speeches, saying, no, I won't go and build an ark. I'd like to kill all living creatures, but we'll save some for a national park. So put in one of every gender, and I'll save your sons and daughters' life. And something else, oh, I remember, you may as well throw in the wife. Because it's boring, teeth clenchingly boring. When for 40 days and 40 nights the rain is pouring. But we'll find a use for Mrs. Noah. She like a part-time job, I'm sure. Like clearing up the old manure. Well, that is boring. Boring. You've heard the story of Delilah and her very passionate affair. And how the history books revile her for cutting all of Samson's hair. Well, he was always at his fighting, or polishing his ass's jaw, and far too busy going smiting to concern himself with his coiffure. Well, it's boring, hair-raisingly boring. Well, Delilah forced a smile and did the pompadouring. For hours she would cut and snip, while Samson had another kip. That's how the scissors came to slip. Because it's boring. Boring. Well, the Lord, he called down from a mountain. Look at me, I am a cloud of fire. But Moses, I am tired of shouting. Can you climb a little higher? 
They say he went all solitary to receive commandments from the Lord. But I bet he took a secretary to chisel down his every word. Cause it's boring, nail-bitingly boring. Typing decrees whilst on your knees adoring. Thou shalt have no other boss but me. Thou shalt make us both a cup of tea. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now that is boring. Boring. Well, women's work was so confining in olden days, and that's the truth. You could turn your hand to concubining, or take a little gleaning job like Ruth, Egyptian, Israelite, or Philistine. Well, if something's wrong, then you're at fault. Lot's wife got turned into a pillar. Well, I'll take that with a pinch of salt. Cos it's boring, bum-numbingly boring. Oh dear, has somebody here started snoring? Just one more thing, then I'll go away. We still get rotten jobs and rotten pay. Cos the prophets never seem to say that it's boring. 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 All together now. Boring. Bible according to Eve. Thank you. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, Katie. I like that. I love that song. Yeah, um, it's a great song. I think that one go with, goes well with the one I sang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Velcro one. Yeah, the Velcro one. Perfect. Except the Velcro is very noisy. Well, the, <laughs> only if you have Velcro to pull apart. <laughs> yes, but if you're a nun at prayer. My mum got into that trouble in the church. She says it pulled her Velcro coat out and it made Oops. this terrible racket. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lesson to be learned there, but let's there not go there. Um, Gwyneth, can you, um, can you sing us a song, please? And you're followed by Dave Clare, please. Well, the song that I... The song that I've planned on doing is called The Bad Ballad of Adam and Eve and Co. Are Unlimited. So now I first heard, well, I only ever heard it once at a Baptist Missionary Society summer school in about 1978. And it was written by somebody called Jonathan Someone. He gave me the words, but I have no idea any other details. It's a well-known tune. It's the tune of On Misty Moisty Morning. So if anybody knows the other half of his name, please let me know. It was in the beginning that all things had their birth. In six days God created the heavens and the earth. He made a man from out the earth and Adam was his name. Sing allelu and allelu and allelu again. Now Adam, he was lonely, so God gave him a wife whose lust for tasting apples has led us into strife. And for old Adam's folly, we all must take the blame. Sing allelu and allelu and allelu again. In the days of Noah, Man's sin had grown so dark, God opened heaven's windows, and Noah built the ark. And in the dark he floated to save himself a swim, singing allelu and allelu and allelu again. Now Abraham and Sarah were very, very old. You're going to have a baby son, old Sarah, she was told. And though she laughed so hearty, it happened just the same. Singing allelu and allelu and allelu again. When all the Hebrew children by Pharaoh they were bound. Old Moses took them through the sea upon the good dry ground. 
But there and his army, they had to take a swim, singing allelu and allelu and allelu again. It was by the Virgin Mary that Jesus Christ was born, all in a lowly stable, all on a Christmas morn. To bring us all salvation, he bore the cross and shame, singing allelu and allelu and allelu again. Sing allelu and allelu and allelu again. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Can I just say that there are other some uh, singers on um, who are here who haven't put their names or uh, haven't put their hands up. If there's anyone who hasn't put their hand up for a, for a, a song, do do put it up now. Meanwhile, can we have Dave, please, followed by Lisa. Have you got a problem? Oh, let's see if we can. Un I've unmuted you. Right, can you hear me? Yeah. No idea what's happened. The computer's just <laughs> crashed. <clears throat> yes, we can hear you. Hi, Dave. David. Good. Cheers. Um, Margaret was talking earlier about. Uh, I was thinking about this on the sixth and ninth of this month. Um, it's the seventy-fifth anniversary of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, and also another thing that reminded me, uh, brought this to mind as well, was the the bomb in Beirut, which was the most incredible, not the bomb, the explosion that looked like uh, the mushroom in cloud. So I was thinking about this song that um, Peggy Seeger wrote. Um, she wrote it as a court defence statement after being arrested in um, in Westminster demonstrating against the sighting of American cruise missiles at Green and Common in um, 1983. Poor old Peggy only got to sing one more first before the ju bastard judge owed her out <laughs> and had her dragged away. Um, but it's a, it's a very moving song that she wrote <clears throat> about the nonsense of nuclear weapons. Um, trying to think. I'm going to sec. Um, I know where my pleasures lie, for pleasures I have many. Hopes and dreams that carry me through daily care and worry. But every pleasure's touched with grief. And every hope blighted with sorrow, nightmare overtakes the dream. I fear I've lost tomorrow. There it is deep in my mind when I wake in the morning. I'm waiting, trembling, listening for the dreadful minute warning. And when I watch the children play and only see annihilation, then I know fear has become. A normal part of living. Nature trains us to survive, protect our children's children. We break the first of human laws, preparing now to kill them. Peace is what they say we have, but it feels more like a 
points and arrow points and I don't eat the stream the promise on tomorrow well you know where your pleasures lie will you have time to use them hopes and dreams are empty joys if we're prepared to lose them and you who stand and shake your head and judge us that we act in error ask yourself deep in your heart do you too live in terror Oh, my spirit's dying day by day it's murdered by warmongers and that is why I'm here for I can bear it any longer well, I'm not here to waste my time I'm not here to beg and borrow. I'm here to demand what's mine. I've come to claim tomorrow. Thank you. Peggy C. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. That's a powerful day. Thank you. Cheers. Oh. Well, everyone I have going, to choose, but they won't go very quiet, which is a change. I guess I had to choose between a creation song and a destruction song. Uh, and in this dark time, I think I'm going to choose neither. I'm going to choose a recreation song, a resistance song. This is a song from Almeida Riddle, who was one of the really great traditional singers from the Ozarks. And it comes from the pen of a, a, a Baptist preacher after World War I. Dear Heavenly Father, will thou deign to hear us? Order all war and to cease. O oh, grant, gracious Father, the assuring in of the dawning of new world of peace 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 sweet dove of peace let your white wings encircle our globe oh lord how we pray and we hope every day for the dawning of world wide peace. Torn from the talons of bloodthirsty rulers, our fathers, brothers, husbands, and our sons, oh, pray that sweet rivers of peace will soon flow where the blood of our own now runs peace peace sweet dove of peace let your white wings encircle our globe Oh, Lord, how we pray, and we hope every day for the dawning of world. Why?
my peace. Beating our weapons and swords into plowshares, sowing the battlefields with wheat and feeding the hungry of every nation living in world wide peace 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 sweet dove of peace let your white wings encircle our globe oh lord how we pray and we hope every day for the dawning of world wide peace that was excellent, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Jude, can can we have a song from you, please, followed by Casey? Right. I'm muting. Right. Um. I think we'll go back to good old unrequited love. So I'll do um, a black uh, Let me get a note. Mm. A blacksmith courted me nine months and better. He fairly won my heart, wrote me a letter. With his hammer in his hand, he looks so clever, and if I were with my love, I would live forever. Oh, where is my love gone? With his cheeks like roses, with his good black billy cup gone, decked with primroses. I'm afraid the scorching sun will shine and burn his beauty. And if I were with my love, I would do my duty. Strange news has come to town, strange news is carried. Strange news flies up and down, that my love is married. Oh, I wish them both great joy, though they cannot hear me. And may God reward him well, for the slighting of me. <clears throat> a blacksmith courted me nine months and better. He fairly won my heart, wrote to me a letter. Oh, with his hammer in his hand, he looks so clever. And if I was with my love, I would live forever. And if I were with my love, I would live forever. Excellent. Can we have uh, Casey from California followed by Jim Lucas, please? Unmute yourself, Casey. I did it too soon and you remuted me. Sorry. I'll get the hang of it. Um, this is from the, the writing of Rosie Hardman, and I learned it from the singing of Jean Redpath. It's called Who Shall Count for Thee. Rich in gold thought, in my hand is plenty. Silver is thy store, and yet thy heart is empty. 
beauty. Who shall count for thee? And what shall be the measure? What in time shall prove to be thy greatest treasure? Rich in pride and fame, dearly has it cost thee. Noted is thy name, and yet thy friends have lost thee. Who shall count for thee? And what shall be the measure? What in time shall prove to be thy greatest treasure? Rich in silks and fine coats of softest leather, Yet can they the storm of friendless sorrow weather? Who shall count for thee? And what shall be the measure? What in time shall prove? to be thy greatest treasure. Rich in music sweet, voice and strings combining, yet bitter is thy tongue, thy foes and friends aligning. Who shall count for thee, and what shall be the measure? What in time shall prove to be thy greatest treasure? Rich in loving food, like a rain upon thee, not for love's reward, but angry glances from thee. Yet I should count for thee unto the fullest measure. Constancy shall prove thy friends thy greatest treasure. Mm. Right. Oh. Good job, Casey. Thank you, Casey. Um, we got. Uh, Jim Lucas, uh, followed by Elizabeth, and then Richard to finish us off. So, Jim, do you want to go ahead? You want to mute yourself, Jim? Jim. I unmuted and suddenly I became muted again. Oh, what I, hopefully I am still uh, unmuted. Uh, <laughs> okay, sea shanty, essentially how I learned it, I, except for the last verse, which is my own, and uh, fairly short, I've heard longer versions, generally done much more slowly. Uh, that must have been really hard work when they did it at that speed. Uh, <laughs> Um, Bold Riley. Oh, and uh, 
yeah, when I sing with friends, I like to sing harmony, but it's hard to sing harmony with myself. So I'm cheating with the concertina. <laughs> goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, my dear old old Wally O. Boom, Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, my dear old old Wally O. Gone away. All right, here is way down our sails. They are set. We're out, we're bound now to Bango Bay. Bold Riley O, boom, Malay. Put a pen to her, boys, it's a hell of a way. Bold Riley O, gone away. Oh, goodbye, my darling, goodbye, my dear O. Bold Riley O, boom, Malay. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, my dear O. Bold Riley O. Gone away. We've sailed to the Indies, both east and west. Bold Riley O. Boom, But the sweet girls of home, they're the ones we love best. Bold Riley O. Goodbye, my dear old bold radio, boom, Goodbye, my darling, goodbye, my dear old bold radio, gone away. <laughs> 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 when I'm out in the open, but I have, I'm in an apartment, uh, a flat for some of you, uh, with neighbors both above and below, and it's oh. 10 minutes till midnight here in Denmark. Ah, okay. Ah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Helsingør, better known to the world as Elsinore. I'm the other side of town from Helsingør. Right, okay, Jim, thank you very much. Thank um, you. Uh, Elizabeth, will you give us a song, please, and then Richard will finish us off, as it were. Okay, this is... You just need to unmute yourself. Canadian, traditional, the history is not accurate. Come all you old men all, let this divide you. Come all you young men all, let not affright you, nor let your courage fail when comes the trial, nor do not be dismayed at the first denial. 
This brave and gallant youth did cross the ocean to free America of her division. He landed at Quebec with all his party, the city to attack, both brave and haughty. Brave Wolf drew up his men in a line so pretty on the plains of Abraham before the city. The French came marching down, arrayed to meet them in double numbers round, resolved to beat them. Montcalm and this brave youth together walked between two armies they like brothers talked then each one took his post and did retire twas then this numerous host commenced to fire the drums did loudly beat with colors flying the purple gore did stream and men lay dying when shot from off his horse fell that brave hero May we lament his loss that day in sorrow. Wolf lifted up his head where the guns did rattle, and to his aid he said, How goes the battle? Quebec is all our own they can't prevent it he said without a groan i die contented brave wolf hmm. <laughs> oh. well thanks thanks elizabeth i like that one um right richard are you ready to Sort us out and finish off the evening, please. Well, I think I might be. Okay, hang on. And I unmute myself. Earlier on, we had The Drover's Dream. Um, one of the songs I'd already shortlisted for this evening was The Shearer's Dream. So here we go. I dreamed I shore in a shearing shed and it was a dream of joy for every one of the roustabouts was a girl dressed up as a boy dressed up like a page in a pantomime prettiest ever i seen red flaxen hair they'd coal black hair and every shade between and there were tall thin girls short fat girls prettiest ever i seen they was four foot five they was six foot high and every shape between the shed was cooled by electric fans that hung over every shoot. The pens were of polished mahogany and everything else to suit. The huts had springs to the mattresses and the tucker was simply grand. And every night by the billabong We'd dance to a German band, and there were tall, thin girls, short, fat girls, prettiest ever I seen. They was four foot five, they were six foot high, and every shape between.
Our pay was the wool on the jumbuck's back, and we shore till all was blue. And the sheep were washed before they were shorn, and the rams was perfumed too. And we all of us wept when the shed cut out, in spite of the long hot days. For every hour them girls waltzed in with the whiskey and beer on trays, and there were tall thin girls, short fat girls, prettiest ever I seen. They was four foot five, they was six foot high, and every shape between. There was three of them girls to every chap, and as jealous as could be. There was three of them girls to every chap, and six of em picked on me. We was draftin' em for the homeward run, and shearin' em off like steam. When I woke with me head in the blazing sun, to find it was only a shearer's dream, but there were tall thin girls, short fat girls, prettiest ever I seen. They was four foot five, they was six foot high, and every shape between. Well done. Thanks, Richard. That was excellent. Um, what a, another excellent evening from everybody. Yep. Mm. Right. Agreed. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you, Livy. Yeah. Yes, thank, thanks, Livy. Thank, thank you. Hello, no everyone. Hey. <laughs> okay. Right. Thanks, James. Yes. Thanks. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, hopefully, see you next week. We'll see you next week.